Eagles, don't cry over the opinions of turkeys. T.D. Jakes. Few creatures have captured the respect and reverence of human beings as much as the eagle has. These large birds of prey that dominate the food chain skies over much of the world have garnered fascination from various human cultures who look to the skies. It might be surprising to know that eagles aren't actually a real group in the scientific sense of the word, but rather a sort of common vernacular term used to refer to larger birds of prey that soar over the clouds. This leads to the non-scientific category of eagle blurring the lines between that of the hawk and the falcon, and sometimes even scavengers like vultures and condors. Technically, true eagles belong to the Anquila genus, which is related to the Old World of Afro-Eurasia, meaning that the American bald eagle isn't a real eagle. Most biologists today prefer to organize the biosphere through a set of clades and common ancestry rather than visible features that us non-scientist plebs categorize them with. But no matter, for this video we'll be covering eagles, and not just those eagles of the old world, also those eagles from the perspective of any human culture that considered an eagle to be, well, an eagle. And given the blurriness of what constitutes an eagle, I'll also cover how other birds of prey have inspired human societies. Generally speaking, eagles tend to represent the largest of these birds of prey, with hawks making up the medium-sized birds of prey. And lo and behold, the category of hawk isn't exactly too scientific either, and it's not really set in stone. Nor is the terminology referring to these animals, as Europeans oftentimes call what Americans call hawks buzzards, and Americans oftentimes use the word buzzard to refer to vultures. Damn, even the term birds of prey is sometimes replaced with the term raptors, which can also refer to a dinosaur, an Air Force jet, or a Ford pickup truck. There are also sea eagles, which may or may not be eagles, depending on what category of eagle you're talking about. Or ospreys, that are pretty much seahawks, but then again, what is really a hawk? Owls are typically raptors, since they're birds of prey that hunt. But their specialization for the nocturnal world and their flat faces mean that they are almost never considered eagles themselves. This entire ordeal shows that the human tendency to categorize the natural world based off of solely our own observation tend to say less about the natural world itself and more about our sort of tendency to make order out of chaos, particularly when we see it in the wilds. What nearly all of these have in common is the ability to hunt prey, whether that prey resides high in the sky like falcons hunting birds or on the ground with hawks uh, killing rabbits and whatnot, or for that matter, even sea eagles are finding prey along the surface of the water. Nearly all of them soar rather than flap their wings constantly like many other bird species do. And given the altitude that they soar upon, nearly all of them have a very keen sense of eyesight. The Egyptians saw their god Ra, as well as the god Horus in the form of falcons. The Aztecs, who found their capital, where an eagle was perched over a cactus with a snake it killed, saw a certain degree of reverence for these mighty birds, cross-culturally at different points of time in vastly different geographies. Zeus, the head of the gods of the Olympus, and the patron god of the skies, chose the eagle to symbolize his mastery of the skies. Sky gods oftentimes find their place as the gods of the gods, leaders of the heavens, a celestial father figure, and a watcher of all those below him. And what better animal to signify that than the eagle, the apex predator of the skies? The imagery of a powerful, large, and elegant beast soaring at the heights that most humans could never attain, spanning the upper worlds of the heavenly overlords instilled a sense of respect for the eagle, and, for that matter, other birds of prey, at least for the most part. Whenever eagles have played a role throughout human history, it has almost always been in a positive light. In the Bible, the book of Exodus uses a metaphor 
in which God rescues his chosen people out of Egypt on the wings of eagles. Being spared from doom through the rescue of eagles would become a common trope in various narratives ranging from the scribes of ancient Judea to Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. The Persians would use birds of prey to signify their dualistic religion of Zoroastrianism, with man of high status perched upon the back of an eagle. While Zoroastrianism was later taken over by Islam as the dominant religion in what is now Iran, the imagery has continued to be a non-Islamic symbol of the Iranian people groups, a symbol of their native-born culture before the influence of the Greeks, Arabs, Turks, and others. The Romans would use the eagle as a symbol of their own military power. The eagle was the emblem, an eagle on top of a staff to rally up the soldiers in times of war. And when this emblem was lost, it was not nearly a loss of an item in and of itself, but rather a loss of a shared sense of pride among the legion. A member of their legion would be called an Aquilifier, or Aquilifier, or Aquilifier, or I, I really can't pronounce the word, you just read it. Also known as an eagle bear. To this day, the term Aquilia is oftentimes used by scientists to refer to the genus for many Old World eagle species. The Roman reverence for the eagle would spread to various other cultures throughout their empire, and due to bringing civilization in much of Europe outside of Greece, their use of eagles as an emblem led to various other European states using the eagle on their coat of arms. The Holy Roman Empire, not to be confused with the actual Roman Empire, had adopted the eagle, namely the double-headed eagle, as a symbol of its heraldry. The Holy Roman Empire, as is oftentimes stated, oftentimes by Voltaire, was not holy, not Roman, and not an empire, but a loose collection of Germanic states that adopted Roman customs, namely the Roman custom of using eagle symbology. Given that much of the land of the Holy Roman Empire covered what is now Germany and Poland, both countries today ended up adopting the eagle as their own animal symbol, both of which are single-headed. No mutants here. The German eagle is black with a gold background, and the Polish eagle is white with a red background. The Russian Empire would also adopt the eagle as a symbol, as it saw itself as the successor of the Roman and Eastern Roman Byzantine empires, and they adopted the double-headed eagle on their coat of arms. However, the bear would eventually become their animal symbol, overriding the eagle. The flag of the European Muslim-majority nation of Albania also uses the double-sided eagle on its flag, signifying the throwing off of the Turkish yoke. And of course, the most famous eagle as a national symbol of all would go to the United States of America through the bald eagle, which is not actually bald, it just looks bald from a distance. The Native Americans, like Europeans, were not a monolith. They had various subcultures across the continent. However, nonetheless, many of them had shown reverence for eagles on their side of the Atlantic. Eagles exuded status, whether they were soaring above the deciduous forests of the Northeast, the central Great Plains, the southwestern deserts, or the temperate rainforests and mountains of the Pacific Northwest. The most famous example of eagles being used to symbolize power were the war bonnets of various Plains Indian tribes, in which the most respected of leaders wore a headpiece, which oftentimes had eagle feathers. And this was shown as a symbol of deference from the people they ruled over to some degree. To this day, certain tribes along the former Great Plains are the only people that are legally able to use feathers for their ceremonial purposes, due to environmental protections and exceptions made for indigenous cultures. Europeans, for better and for worse, would arrive with their own reverence of their old world eagles, and would be equally impressed by those of the new world namely the bald eagle. The bald eagle was picked as the U.S.'s national animal, however, it did meet some resistance, namely from the founding father, Benjamin Franklin, who wanted the turkey to be the national animal, 
Because as I stated before, eagles do not care for the cries of turkeys. Or more accurately, they don't cry over the opinions of turkeys. Uh, turkeys don't quite elicit the same sort of inspiration or emotions as eagles, for that matter, although they do inspire a great deal of hunger. While depictions of eagles have largely been positive, the same has not been true for other birds of prey. Vultures, on the other hand, have been viewed negatively, as they are rather, let's just put it bluntly, ugly, and they're scavengers that eat rotten carcasses. Vultures, despite their negative image, play an important role cleaning up the ecosystem of decaying flesh, with their stomachs so strong they could put Nikocado avocados to shame. Turns out the reason why they are bald is because the food they eat contains a lot of pathogens and is rotting, and feathers make it easier for those pathogens to survive as it provides them with more surface area, hence why vultures are largely bald. Given that this is, well, disgusting, Vultures alongside other scavengers, like ravens, crows, and hyenas, tend to be viewed negatively by human cultures, as they live off of carcasses that cause a great deal of disgust in the human mind. Nonetheless, the aforementioned Zoroastrians have practiced sky burials, in which human caskets are oftentimes handed over to vultures and other carrion birds to be eaten, and thereby be united with the skies above. Owls also play a distinctive role in human cultures, sometimes being seen as symbols of wisdom, despite not being particularly smarter than other birds of prey. And outside of that, they're oftentimes seen as ominous, bringers of misfortune in various parts of the world, from the native tribes of the Apache of New Mexico to parts of Sub-Saharan Africa and elsewhere. I suspect that since these owls hoot frequently at dusk as it's getting darker, they have become symbols of the coming darkness and night, which for a diurnal species like humans, uh, before the advent of electricity, would have been rather scary, despite the fact that owls themselves don't really pose any significant threat to humans, and were probably helpful to early human farming societies due to them hunting rats and mice. Today, birds of prey have been subject to conservation efforts, The most notable example of this is the American Endangered Species Act, which has been very successful as it has delisted the bald eagle, the symbol of the United States, from the endangered species list, since it's rebounded its numbers over the course of decades. However, other stories have not been quite as successful, such as the Californian condor, which is still critically endangered. I suppose that before human modernity came into the scene, Many human cultures saw these birds of prey as almost untouchable and supernatural because in many ways they were untouchable, they were flying so high. Untouched and vulnerable to the barbarity of Earth's surface as they stared down at us from their safe vantage point, ruling over the skies and ruling over various other birds. However, as humans expanded and dominated the Earth, of which these birds of prey looked down upon, these kings of the skies turned out not to be quite as powerful as we once thought they were. If anything, some of them need drastic protection. After all, now we humans control the skies, that our ancestors once thought were out of reach. But nonetheless, we designed the builds of our planes, our vessels of the skies, after the great avian beasts, our ancestors, both literally and figuratively looked up to. Thanks for watching.